Hi there. Summer is here once again, and there is a lot of outdoor cooking taking place. And that seems to be as good an excuse as any to do some outdoor cooking of our own, especially with some uh, vintage pieces by Birmingham Stove and Range. Birmingham Stove and Range produced cast iron pans for outdoor cooking for the entire lifespan of their company, though they made kitchen cookware in far greater numbers. Even today, BSR skillets can be found everywhere at flea markets, antique stores, and other places, but finding a legged camp oven or a spider from BSR is extremely rare, especially because most sellers don't even recognize what BSR outdoor cookware looked like. Nearly every cast iron spider seen on eBay uses silly terms like cowboy cooking to try to sell it, and it's always assumed any spider with a handle dates to the 19th century. In fact, the BSR cast iron spider, which they called a camp leg skillet with a long handle, was made with the same design and size from their earliest days all the way to the 1970s or 1980s. Here are photos of an older spider from BSR's Red Mountain days, and this confirms this pan was indeed made by BSR. As you can see, it has simple markings on the top and the bottom, and like their kitchen cast iron, this spider has an IN mark for inches. It's worth noting this doesn't have a size mark on the handle, and they were produced in the 20th century after gate marks were removed from these pieces. So this is not the same as a 19th century spider or before, but chances are the lid would probably fit on a gate mark spider with the same measurement. This is a BSR camp spider that was probably made from the 1960s to the 1970s and it has some features that do identify it as being modern. The most obvious difference is the tab handle on top of the lid. This was done as a cost-cutting measure since BSR didn't make very many of these lids compared to the numbers of their kitchen cookware. Meanwhile, here's a piece of cast iron history almost no one knows about, and it's nearly impossible to find. During their early days, BSR produced these camp ovens using a design similar to their cauldrons and sugar kettles. I've only seen photos of one of these pots posted to the cast iron cooking group back in 2016. It was so unusual, I didn't recognize it at first, but the actual BSR catalog confirms this was indeed a genuine camp oven. It's so rare, even BSR discontinued its production, as you can see in their own catalog. On the other hand, after BSR began its modern automated production in the late 1960s, they redesigned the camp oven so it looked exactly like the common camp oven with legs we see from many other cast iron manufacturers. These camp ovens are still hard to find, but not impossible like the older style, and a few of these do show up on eBay and Facebook from time to time. We should note these BSR camp ovens always had a size number on the lid and the bottom. These days, scammers and rip-off artists on eBay are trying to sell an Asian-made Dutch oven as vintage, so be sure to note if this has absolutely no markings at all on the top of the bottom, it's made in Asia and it's definitely not vintage. So, a couple of days ago, I headed out to a public beach, especially to do some outdoor cooking. My apartment doesn't have any outside space to do any cooking, so I had to go to a crowded public beach. I don't have a BSR camp oven, so I had to bring along a large 8-inch camp oven, but I am proud to own a BSR Spider, and I was glad to have the chance to cook with this. I do have to say it was a lot of fun, but man, was it ever exhausting. The thing about outdoor cooking is you want to do as much preparing in advance as possible. Here we put together some sweet honey cornbread mix now, so all we'll have to do is dump it in the Dutch oven and bake it. We could just use Jiffy box mix, but I become rather fond of making cornbread from scratch, and if you're going to take the time to cook outdoors, you may as well go all the way and prepare something good. The other dish will be a very simple dish of baked chicken, rice, and mushrooms. And all we have to do now is measure out our rice in advance. And with that, we pack all of our gear into the car 
and head out to do some cooking. By the way, if you've never used a coal chimney, run, don't walk, and get one before the next time you cook outdoors. It only took about 15 minutes for the coals to be ready for cooking. The rule of thumb is to double the amount of coals on the lid of your pot, so we're placing a ring of coals underneath. The science of coal cooking gives us some precise temperature control, so we're not just making a wild guess on how hot the pan is before we add the food. And here we bring out the BSR spider and start laying coals on the top. Here we don't even have any food in the pans yet, we're just preheating them in preparation for the actual cooking. On top of this we lay a large 8 inch camp oven. Stacking your pots is one of the genius inventions of coal cooking as we're heating both pans at the same time without having to use more charcoal. And we've gotten the spider good and hot and it's time to prepare the chicken. We're browning our chicken pieces before cooking them, just like we do in the kitchen. After a few minutes, we flip the chicken pieces and brown both sides. All we need to do is brown the skin, because we'll be thoroughly cooking these with rice. We set the chicken aside and add our rice to the pan. Then we just add a little less than four cups of chicken broth. While the rule is usually double the amount of liquid to rice, I find it works best with just a little less than that amount of liquid. And here we simply add our favorite sauce to flavor the rice and the chicken. And the chicken goes back into the pan. To this, we add some chopped mushrooms. And we cover this with our lids, still hot from the coals, then start adding more coals to bring it up to the right temperature. We're aiming for around 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and we'll be cooking this for probably an hour and 15 minutes. This gives us plenty of time to prepare the cornbread. The large camp oven has been heating with the coals, and it's definitely hot enough to give us the sizzle when we add the cornbread batter. Then we cover the pot and stack it on top of the spider. Add some more coals on top to bring it to the right temperature. And finally, we add some more coals to the coal chimney so we can add the next batch to the BSR spider with the chicken. And when these coals are ready, the cornbread should be done. <laughs> the cornbread turned out perfect. I was worried it would be burned on top, but it turned out great. We add a new batch of coals to the spider and take out the cornbread. The chicken will be done in maybe another half hour, but at this point, all we need to do is relax and wait. And now comes the centerpiece of our project. Chicken, rice, and mushrooms cooked in a BSR cast iron spider. The chicken is falling off the bone and it wasn't burned by the hot lid. This was a well-deserved reward for a long afternoon of outdoor cooking. All we had to do now was chow down, then we could pack up and go home. I'm so glad I had the chance to do some outdoor cooking with that spider because it was a lot of fun and I'm really proud of how well the food turned out. It's actually hard to justify taking the time to do this elaborate setup when so many people were just slapping burgers and dogs on portable grills and camp stoves and having them all done in a fraction of the time it took me to cook this. Then again, this was almost certainly better than store-bought frozen burgers cooked on a portable grill. And that in itself made it worth having the chance to play with this spider. 
because that's the best reason to own and use a good cast iron pan. You get to make great food that's head and shoulders above the rest. This certainly makes me look forward to the next time I cook outdoors with friends and family. And just as important, I hope you enjoyed seeing some of the history of the forgotten pieces from Birmingham Stove and Range that certainly deserve to be discovered and preserved. And that can be almost as much fun as cooking with them. So have some fun and get out there and do some cooking this summer. Thank you for watching.